distal anastomosis parachute technique. The heart is positioned in the holder using knitting needles and the anterior descending coronary artery is identified. If you are unsure which is the artery and which is the vein, follow them up and you will see that the artery curves round towards the aorta whilst the vein goes in the other direction towards the coronary sinus. For this anastomosis we shall be using pig ureter and we will prepare this by cutting it obliquely and then with your assistant holding the very tip cut back slightly to create the right shape and size for your anastomosis. To perform the arteriotomy, apply traction with some fine forceps and ask your assistant to provide counter traction. With a fine blade, make a gentle sweeping incision over the artery, pushing the epicardium to one side. As the artery comes into view, you should aim to make an incision in the middle of the artery. The incision is then extended with both forward and backward cutting coronary scissors. The size of the arteriotomy is compared for size match with the incision in the conduit. It is estimated that the incision in the conduit should be approximately one and a third times the length of the arteriotomy. There are many ways of performing a parachuted anastomosis. The technique we are about to show uses three heel stitches and continues with the same needle along the anastomosis. If you have been demonstrated or are familiar with other techniques then please feel free to use them. Using a double armed 6-0 or 7-0 proline insert your first suture just to the right of the heel of the conduit. from outside to in. Using the same needle, pass the suture from inside the artery on the assistance side of the heel to outside. The next stitch goes directly through the heel of the conduit. Traction from your assistant helps demonstrate this to you. The suture then passes through the heel of the arteriotomy and back up 
through the conduit. The final stitch is passed through the arterial wall and the conduit is now ready to be parachuted down. With the aid of your assistant, gently lower the conduit down, avoiding loops and tears and ensuring that the conduit lies in the correct position. Once the conduit is in place, continue with the same needle, moving from outside the vein to inside and from inside the artery to outside. As you move along the wall of the anastomosis, you may find it suitable to pick up both the conduit and the arterial wall in one pass. However, when you come to the toe of the anastomosis, it is preferable to take this in two bites. The suture in the toe of the anastomosis is often best placed using a backhand suture and needless to say has to be placed with utmost accuracy. The anastomosis is now continued using a backhand suture turn the anastomosis towards yourself and with gentle traction you will be able to continue the anastomosis towards your starting point The knot is tied and the suture cut. The external appearance of the anastomosis is checked. There should be no dog ears or other unsatisfactory features and there should be good suture spacing and depth. 
Injection of a dye can be used to confirm patency and absence of leaks. Internal probing of the graft following transection confirms a widely patent lumen in both directions.